It's been years since I have dined at the Carnegie first. Quite amazed with what I have been offered for as little money as I could have had. Still, it's a place that remains the best kept secret of our inner city squalor, as if nothing has changed for the worse. Well, everything must, according to the Western economic model. And um, as the faceless bureaucrats from afar, like horse thieves of the wild American West, go on robbing the most vulnerable of their own countrymen using self-serving bills, enforcement, and repetitious cutbacks to all social programs beginning with welfare. It is only thanks to the gentle women and men who volunteer their own invaluable time that compassion remains the exclusive property of people. Where else? One would have never come across the people of the Carnegie Kitchen. Let me ask you a question, dear citizen of the Western world. In the face of the new systemic hatred resulting in widespread homelessness and desperation of so many, how many of you on the way to dinner would have the will to rub shoulders with the motley crew of prisoners of cocaine and deprived of hope, including the prison guarding pushers bearing the mark of death upon their darkened faces. They are the ones keeping guard to the entrance for as long as I can remember. They've been doing it better than the Carnegie's own walkie-talking and rather frightened security. One ought to have a good reason to want to pass through the gates of hell, just like Dante did. The reason being the search for proof that humanness remains the sole property of people. And so, the people of the Carnegie Kitchen are there mixing such proof into the proverbial pudding. That is why they deserve the best of God's blessing. It would not be much of a mystery, I guess, seen from a standpoint of a staff member why the Carnegie Kitchen stands out as the only relief service in this city with a new age attitude towards the feeding of its patrons. And as such, serving protein food to animal lovers, known for not wanting to eat those whom they consider to be friends. Garden platters are offered to our self-proclaimed herbivores who wouldn't be caught dead wearing funny-looking headgear. Carnegie's menu offers choice for those deprived of choice in many other aspects of their urban lives and gives back purchasing power to those who are bright though otherwise powerless. Like democracy, which is food for thought. And like political freedoms being the sustenance for more than the political fringe. The Carnegie Kitchen provides more than the taste of normalcy in an abnormal climate of public restraint for the government's gain. They claim we are free to believe in anything we choose but the legislature. The ringing sound of porcelain 
travels across the floors of the Carnegie Center, making me think of the old trams of Krakow and their passengers, as colorful as the regulars of the Carnegie Kitchen. The only difference being the background sound of my native tongue, soft and shimmering as it used to be. The sounds of the Carnegie Kitchen bring back the memory of home, no longer far away from wherever it used to be. The people of the Carnegie Kitchen are the ones aiming for the status of miracle workers in these hardening times. They come and then move on to face the challenges of their personal lives, thus giving space for the others to gain similar experience once in a lifetime. I dream how much saner our new world would have been if stern civil servants, while still in the making, could spend a day behind the counter of the Carnegie Kitchen, where characters are shaped as gently as the spinach wraps. And yet I know that it will never happen, since the timeless defense of what makes humanity special depends on those who offer to give of their own free will. Such are the people of the Carnegie Kitchen, volunteering in valuable time, time and again serving an exquisite proof that humanness remains the sole property of people. <laughs>